थैंक यू एम आई ऑडिबल इन अप एंड ऑल्सो कैन सी मी एवरीबडी ओके आई एम एट राइट पोजिशन या सो यू मे बी वंडरिंग वेर दी फिगर ट्वेंटी सेवन कम्स फ्रॉम बिकॉज ट्वेंटी सेवन फिगर कम्स इफ यू गो बैक टू अराउंड नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइंटी वन when uh, some of us in mumbai met together and toyed with the idea why don't we collect the collectors that time it was not the idea to collect the collectors but to form some kind of a uh, group of friends who don't want to be enemies but want to be friends among this large field of field of collecting records holding them for personal use not showing it to others one extreme other extreme be so generous that if you get two copies of a record you won't be at peace unless you go to your friend and give it to him in person two extremes very recently i came across one family in bombay i went to their house and the guy pulled out um, sorry should i be little here the guy pulled out the records from his cabin first put on the gloves on his hand then took out the sleeve i mean no dust in room anywhere and he just made sure that i am also not having any dust so everything is so clean and nice that even a speck of dust falls on his surface of the records i mean he is finished yeah you are entering into the space age or something the kind of music i listened to there was really out of this world on the other hand recently one collector in mumbai collected just last week and he is sitting with us and i am also proud that he is with us that there is another community who takes great pleasure in scratching the records further so one can imagine the range of collectors and collections and what a mad 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 world so for next um, hour or so we will be um, uh, talking about some such mad caps seeing some of them live on video and when and possible i will try to narrate some anecdote because that make the story very interesting so that's where the number 27 comes when we began to bring together isolated pillars of empires of their household collections into a group which we said uh, preservation documentation and dissemination of wealth engraved or recorded in the grooves of gramophone record because 1990 90 that period was such that as you can see in the slide there is a machine on left side and a disc on the other side and we all worried that this is the format which will die out soon which will go away soon which will never return and that's it the doomsday has come and why do i say so because um, if you go to the beginning of the century last century i mean except few experts sitting here they know all kind of different labels and about 500 different labels of indian releases but if you ask a common man who is a music lover he say music means hmv and hmv means his master's voice and his master's voice means a nipper dog dog looking into and listening to his master's voice which is emanating from the horn of a gramophone so that has ruled all of us and if you go to internet and see guinness book of world record or something among the top 10 brands worldwide they did a survey and this was one of the top 10 brands beside coca cola nipper and the dog and practically this emblem ruled music industry throughout although in india now its name is changed from hm to sare gama but in our minds and heads this is a family uh, uh, commodity if you go to the middle of the century that is around 1950s really these dogs <laughs> i mean these are human beings of course but 
these are ruled and you can see from the window there is a uh, caricature of the dum dum select factory where the discs were pressed earlier and this managing director uh, board meeting is going on and you can see what they are eating in the tea in <laughs> tea and but the chairman look at the chairman of the meeting that is a uh, horn type um, gramophone so that was the stature which uh, was there for this medium and toward the end of century the same nipper dogs uh, carrying the all that stuff which um, was to be salvaged and this is ice skate they are going slide down and we thought that it will all go away and that's the time 1985 or 90 when CDs just started appearing in the market in 85 it was in Philips laboratory on experimental basis slowly we never knew that CDs will take over for next 10 years and people thought that CD, DVD, Blu-ray will be staying forever, but that has proved wrong. And now, if I have to give a talk somewhere, I have to include all of them. So collectibles and collectors are not only for gramophone machines and cylinder machines, but there are records and CDs and discmans and walkmans and all kinds of audio tape, or tape recorders and mobile phones and pen drives and whatnot. So one can imagine uh, a guy standing here 50 years from now, uh, he will have a huge range of things to take care of. And one Sunny's museum or one uh, club home at uh, Kochi may not be sufficient. You need to multiply in many, many ways. If at all, you want to preserve something. And I hope all the people in the audience, they are for preserving. So, I just decided how do I go about it, whether I should on the timeline begin where the 27 zero line or come to 27, but I have decided I will go backwards. So I will uh, first of all highlight some of the achievements of collecting the collectors and what it happened. And this guy is very familiar here in this hall at least. And this book also is uh, floating around. He came to my house in 2008. Again. Thanks to internet, he found me through internet, called me. I said, look here, um, you can come, but I do not know what you are expecting from me, so you send me a question here before you come to my house. Then he came and uh, we talked and he said, I'm a crazy guy, I'm a musician, I'm a record collector, I do all kind of stuff. I come to India many times, I like Idli Dosa, Ajula Chapati Puri. And um, so we, eight hours almost we spent in my house. And then he went back, he wrote in my article on me on internet, that's still available there. Again we met in 2012 when he came as a Fulbright Fellow in India. And around the same time, there was a Yaza conference where most many of us met together first time in Delhi. I didn't know that this guy is up to going into the collector's houses and studying them and finally maybe he will bring out a book after a few years. And that's what he had done. In fact, last year when he came uh, to my house and he said, Suresh, next month this book is going to be released in New York ceremonially. So this is a copy for you in advance. I opened it and I saw out of 200 or odd pages, the text is hold hardly six or eight pages of text and rest of the so mucky and dirty pictures. So I said, Rob, what is this? Who is going to buy this book? He said, don't worry. I am an artist. I am a creative artist. That's what people call me. And my job is to do it. It's up to the readers and people what to do it. And she but said, why, why did you do this? He said, look, Suresh, languages and spoken words all things came much later. Even today, when you go somewhere, the first, what you see around the image goes into your head. And you interpret your own way. So I want people to see first images, let them have any comment in their head. If they are more curious, more anxious to know what's happening around and what it is all about, there is an index at the end. Each page is listed what it means, what it contains. This book is remarkable in the sense that during his travel, uh, he met 
people. Uh, he met uh, flea market. He bought records. He went back, and there is his very good friend, Jonathan Ward in Los Angeles. He took all the records from all the way from Seattle to Los Angeles, and in his studio they remastered all these mucky and dirty and junky records. Many of things maybe you will find them here also. And the sound came out so clean that on the flip, both sides of the book, there are two audio CDs which contain 26 tracks each. You won't believe that these come from a place where the picture what is shown and the sound. So he had documented this thing. And so I said, God bless you. My best regards for you for the book. So he went away. and in. Whenever the, the, the next month the release function was in New York, and he wrote me mail same evening, Suresh, all the copies of the book were sold out of the release function itself. <laughs> but I have kept few aside, 50 for my close friends. So I said, what about the second edition? He said, that's up to publisher and me. I am on to the new project now. So I am very proud. Next to what we are seeing here, that this is one example where collecting the collectors has is paying. So we are on the right track. And um, so you see, you see these things lying here idle. Otherwise, you may say, what do you use? It's a grab, scarpage. No. Every, they're different, depending on what human, different human being, what you are looking into, they have different uses. So this was one example. Second example goes back to two years before that. That is 2010. Here is a young IT professional, Vikram Sampath, graduate from Birla Institute of Technology, studied for banks and did all kinds of, but his heart and passion is in music. He was doing um, a book on history of Mysore state. And while he was doing, I don't know whether people should believe in it or that at night, he used to get some kind of strange dream that somebody is haunting him, somebody is chasing him, somebody is asking him, I am here, please come, awaken me up. So after a few days, uh, that's what he had written in the book. It's not my story. After a few days, he just uh, browsed through the correspondence of Mysore State, uh, and he found all the letters written by Goharjan to Maharaja of Mysore. And then he was more curious. So he found out from internet, what is, who is this Goharjan and what are these? He didn't know till then. And then he stumbled upon my article, which I posted on 2002 when this lady's first recording was 100 years old. So he called me um, and said, can I listen to some of her songs? I said, there are some already up on the YouTube and up. You can listen to them. So he listened. I want to listen to complete repertory. Who will have it? I said, OK, if you want, you can come. I will give you all the songs I have. I have nothing to hold with me. So he flew back from Bangalore to Mumbai and um, met me. But I said. 25 years old, young man, what do you want to do with all the recording which were in 1902? I want to write a book. Okay, you take all these CDs, take all the articles which I want. He went out and I said, okay, this is 11th person who has come and taken the material from me. I forgot. But after two years, this man comes back with the book. My name is Goharjan. Now it has gone into six editions in English, translated into four languages. And uh, with my persuasion and insistence, he has given one audio CD, which is with the book. And the story doesn't end there. One day he got a call from Delhi, from Sonia Gandhiji's office, that I want to meet you. So he went there. And Madam told him that this lady has performed in Alabar in Motila Nehru's time. Then she takes him inside and shows this is the cupboard which Rajiv Gandhi had collected the gramophone records. <laughs> so you see, one lady and her voice, which is hidden in the shellac grooves here, can, after 100 years, they could be a rebirth. So this is a second example which all of us collectors should particularly be proud of. Then the third example comes around 2012. And this is my good friend from Mumbai, Naresh Fernandes, History of Jaz in Bombay. History of Jaz in Bombay. Again, with my insistence and my help, we have 
given one audio CD, with all that happened in big hotels in Mumbai like Taj Mahal and where British bands were playing. And many of the musicians after independence, when they were out of that work, they went into Bollywood film music and they started working as a composers and arrangers with uh, O.P. Nair and many, many. So this man has come out with a book, Taj Mahal Foxtrot. And like me, he was also a frequent visitor to Mumbai flea market, Chor Bajar, and picked up many uh, goodies from there. And he did not stop just at the listening of the record, but he started going deep into where it is, why it is, who is singing. And that book also on the internet and beautiful websites. So this was the third example, which again um, takes us, gives us inspiration. This is a fourth example of a person who is a uh, lawman in government, now retired, Mr. A.N. Sharma. He came out with a book, Bajanama, a copy is also here in the our museum. So he deals with the early recordings of all Baiji's beautiful pictures like this talking machine book. No audio CD, unfortunately, that time, because that time uh, we were not uh, knowing each other. But the next book from the same man came just last year, The Wonder That Was Cylinder. And for this book, uh, there is an interesting story that this man, like all of us, they, um, he had a habit. Whenever he goes to any new town or city, he will leave aside uh, all other works and he will go to flea markets and antique shops. So this time, he went with his family, with his wife. His wife name is Abha, A-B-H-A. -A. So they were looking, this man was looking like passion, like sunny, all kinds of stuff records, antique shops. And Ava suddenly found out there is some trunks lying somewhere on the top and something is protruding out like a bangle holder. So she asked, uh, she told Sharma, look, there's something for you there. <laughs> she asked shop owner, oh, wo to kachra hai. Wo, you can take it, peanuts. But they knew what it is. 450 cylinders in two trunk pools, which nobody knew in all these years. So this man brings home, does all the cleaning, dirty job, and then he comes out with a playable cylinder of about 20, 30, and comes out with a book. So from cylinder to compact disc, there is so much to look into, so much to work with, but it needs a human mind, human body, and human brain to work with, and that is why the collecting the collectors because they play a very important role. Otherwise, these are things are lying either on the shelf somewhere with somebody, and that's why this man in this book, that also book is in the museum, if you open and see the index, one chapter says Abha cylinders. You know Edison cylinders, you know Columbia cylinders, but this is a new addition to the dictionary of cylinders, Abha cylinders, because credit goes to the lady who has spotted them. Okay. So these are the sources from where? <laughs> We all go, and sometimes the things are so mucky, so dirty, especially if you go in heavy monsoon day, either in Calcutta, Bo Bajar, or Bombay, Chor Bajar, it's stinking all over in the places, and still, for the love and passion of the music and shellacs and the, what the grooves contain, we all keep going. And uh, on the left, there is a, kya naam hai unka bhul gaya abhi? Shafi bhai, you know him? Uh, Anwar Ali. Anwar Ali, when he was very young, now he is very old, of our age, 65, 70, he is very proud owner of his um, uh, disc and the machine. That's why if you see the Rob book, Rob front book has a shelf where all the records are put in a different way and the back front is all these horn type machines. And the man here holding two records is young V.K. Rangarao of Chennai, who is said to have 50,000 plus discs in his private collection. And uh, as Rob book also will tell and some of my stories will tell, we have found just 10% of what really collectors exist in India. Let me confess. And what remains to see who are the other 90%. And that big task, uh, I'm going to take it up in next two years, that whenever a tip comes, go to the guy, whether he throws me out or welcomes me in, doesn't matter. But find out if still there are private collectors in India 
who hold such stuff which is useful for posterity so this is a example of um, mumbai chor bazar somebody's private house which he has a box type machine and records scattered all over and ranga rao and this is what is in your town <laughs> you know this man in mutton cherry he is a small small shop i have gone there a couple of times and i am all the time surprised that most of his stuff maybe cloth or something is all in time in the polythene bags <laughs> and there are antique shops here and but me and sunny always will be interested in this and look he is a very happy man because he is holding some money so money will go this way records will that we go that way and both of them will be happy because he would say yeah before him because he would say now maybe he will swap the card because this man say will say oh i have fooled him i have <laughs> sold him at much higher prices than actually i should have whereas sunny will say oh i have got a treasure of the world now and that's how it shows on the faces of both the guys okay so this what goes in the psyche of a record collector this man sitting in the heap of records and holding one record in hand is a professor of economics he passed away 10 years ago he hails from a place called nadiyad in gujarat his name is professor sharad bhai mehta and his specialty was that he would go to flea market and only collect acoustic records of old bijis nothing else ghor jaan malka jaan if you ask him lata mang said no 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 it's not my piece of cake all old is so as a result at the end of his um, uh, career about 5000 discs he collected which become a very valuable source but unfortunately that time no ground fund company nobody went to tap the source and reissue because when this reissue business started with ground fund company with help of some of us he was already gone but now his collection has gone into a nadiyat book library and i have to one day go and find out what they are doing with that whether it is dusting or again going on the roads so this is one example from gujarat he is our president of society of indian record collector mr narayan bhai mulani he is holding a very proud yellow colored record plastic record of bulbul label and he is a businessman he works in a firm his own firm and he is import and export and forwarding agency so it's a very big business but from since from his childhood he is in the passion of collecting records to the extent that once uh, he told me that he was a very small little boy and his grandmother was very sick and he said narayan please give bring me that um some gujarati bhajan record and she will describe green label <laughs> and this design and this boy will go and exactly take out the record that's what how from the childhood and most of us sitting here are in it uh, since that age this another gentleman mr prabhakar datar he lives in pune now he 88 years old he is a retired person from reserve bank of india in his career he was offered officer's post three times and all the three times he refused because that time you could refuse <laughs> and only reason because if i am a clerk i am fine i can go out any time come in any time but if i am an officer first of all more responsibility than i will be transferred and why i shouldn't be transferred because then i will miss my weekly visit to mumbai chor bazar <laughs> and he explains me that in 1960s and 70s those who have visited mumbai chor bazar would know that on friday when shops are closed and all the people put the disc and paraphernalia on the pavement any alley you go you would see such antiques and records to such a pile that you have to look up to see who is selling from all sides so that were really hell days and he said we were very poor salary people we had a limited income we had limited money so very 
we, we saw many records just going out from our hand because we didn't have money. This is me. I'm look, looking a little better <laughs> in this picture because I'm very old. Uh, now I look better, good. Uh, I worked with Tata Institute of Fundamental Research for 36 years, my first and last job. And I didn't change because, again, the same reason. Of course, I accepted all promotions. I did my PhD also, did all that. Because my office and home were across the road. I cross the road and I go in the office, I cross the road, I come back home. So that's why I could devote much more time in what uh, I could do. And the time which I spent in my hobby or passion or activity, now is rewarding me by getting me more engaged in last five years. And this is Mr. Vyake Rangarao at a later stage in Chennai. So these are some uh, sample collectors which, I mean, these are the collectors which we know of. Now I will come to uh, this aspect a little later, but we'll go to some video part now. Yeah, so I want to start first from here. And uh, yeah, and there are two records from Sunny's Place, which should I play first? So for that, I have to little bit enhance the icon, then I will know which one I should play. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so I should play this one. This has a very significant because I have a very deep uh, and very lovable memories of this place because I am coming here from last eight years, 2008, I first time I landed here. And that too because I was working on one project called Young India Label Records. And that time uh, we got connected with Sunny and I asked Sunny, can I come to your place? I wanted to have some recordings of Young India because I am doing a project with British Library. <coughs> he said, okay, you come, but uh, these are all things are unorganized and I don't guarantee that I will show you anything because the things are in mess. So that time I came and then slowly our friendship developed and the idea of museum was discussed and now we are in, in, in it today. But during the formative days, I learned a lot from Sunny. If the record is so much eaten up by uh, white hands and you don't even, I mean, you, a normal person is yuck, what a dirt, you throw away how to retrieve the sound from such a record. And he told me the technique. He said, your hands will get dirty, but don't worry. The record sound will come out nice. So took a polishing wax for cars and then put on the record and then play a number of times till you get a good sound. So we are going to see one example of that. The MPC is OK. Uh, Hmm? Hmm. Pardon me? So 
Oh, do you like this? <laughs> you won't believe taken from this camera. And right when the disc is getting cleaned like this, the sound is coming out in the ambience and Sunny is sitting next to the machine and this is how the sound comes which I am sharing with you today after so many years. So this is the new learning experience for me. And the man was not uh, just uh, in the records, uh, he was very deep in uh, mending machines and that's how it is. Which model is this, you said? Model 2. Just play it again for me. Yes, Pate upon Pate upon 2. Ah. Yeah. This one, Pate upon number 2. Hmm. Wow. This one. Wow, man and the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. So this is Sunny um, repairing machine. And like Arohi or who has come for the first time, he is so overwhelmed and see so much to see, so much to put in your head and put in your mobile. I was in the same situation when I came here first time and I saw all these things that he is not sitting idle for a minute. He is all the time doing something or the other. And this is what I um, shared with you. Now let me go to list mode and take back to one gentleman from Mumbai. This man is called Pritam Menghani. Pritam Menghani he is a Sindhi fellow. Lives in suburb called Ullas Nagar near Mumbai. All his life he was a um, what can we say, not a proper, but dealer of gramophone records. A sub dealer you can say, not like Shafi or Salim Bhai who have their own shops and they are doing business. He would go to Shafi's house, uh, Shafi's shop or Salim's shop and then buy records and then he will sell them to his clients all over the country. He would go in bags with records and he will sell. So he's a, and this man is 83 and still in the same place there. So we are going to see him when he was relatively younger. You will see he is wearing a colorful shirt and explaining with so much joy on his face. And um, every Friday he would go from Ulasnagar to Bhaikala, go to Chor Bajar, bring the record back home and then rest of the month he will go to Delhi, Mumbai, anywhere uh, he, he want to go and do the business. This excerpt which you are seeing, there are two parts. This is from a one hour documentary which Indian TV made on him. One part is that he is talking about his own records and another part is where one ethnomusicologist, Dr. Ashok Ranade, very famous name in this field, he is talking about how this otherwise junkyard people or kabadiwala records are helping me in my doing my own research. So that is small, small uh, thing we'll see. पर उतारा था प्रीतम भाई ने हमारी विरासत के उद्धार के लिए यह विपुल संग्रहालय बनाया है इसके लिए भावी पीढ़ियां उन्हें भगीरथ के रूप में ही याद करेंगी फॉर्चुनेटली वी हैव मैड पीपल इन मेनी एरियाज ऑफ लाइफ जैसे रिकॉर्डिंग इंडस्ट्री में रिकॉर्ड करने वाले भी मैड थे और रिकॉर्ड रखने वाले भी काफी मैड लोग निकले उन्होंने बिल्कुल अपने पैसे से रिकॉर्ड्स इकट्ठा किए एंड नाउ द फॉर्चुनेटी फॉर्चुनेट इंसिडेंस इज दैट दीज रिकॉर्डिंग सुनाव हैव बिल्ट अप सच अ वंडरफुल अलकाइज ऑफ म्यूजिक दैट आवर पास्ट इज नो मोर अ पास्ट इट इज अ लिविंग पास्ट 
So whenever I think ki I have a difficulty about linking up the past with the present, I pritam bhai ka sochta hu. And that always helps. Dekhi, ye jo record hai na, ye 105 dras purana record hai. Aur ye record hai na, kahin CD pe, kisi cassette ke upar ye record ki recording nahi aayegi. Aur vakti saath change ho gaya, magar isme change nahi aaya. आज भी कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं जो इसको ही सुनना पसंद करते हैं जो चीज इसमें है वो कहीं नहीं है तो रिकॉर्ड ही सुनना पड़ता है आदमी को अगर रिकॉर्ड नहीं सुनेगा तो उसको वो चीज मिलेगी नहीं जो पुराने लोग हैं आज भी ये बाजी रख के बैठे हैं सेवेंटी एट आर रिकॉर्ड रख के बैठे हैं और जो रिकॉर्डों में आज भी कुछ स्पीचें या गाने हैं वो सी और कैसेट में नहीं है So this uh, director Sharad Datta, when he came to my house, when he was filming this, he said, Suresh, I went to this man's house, he played the record and I had to put the microphone way away from the horn because so much sound coming in and there is no way I can control it. So that's the power of these uh, machines. So we saw somebody uh, in Gujarat, Professor Nadia, this, then somebody, Sunny, we saw and then we went in Bombay. Now let us go to Calcutta. He is Mr. Sushanto Kumar Chatterjee. Most of them digitally, for a computer, is for a film. 8,000 records are going to be on a video. He is talking on phone about 8,000 records somebody is telling. Bangalore, Cochin, Aikane. Aikane, only the only thing, our response to record transfer is going to be on a video. He is going to be on a video. ऐसा वो रिकॉर्ड उठाने जमा कर दो। तब उन्हें शोस तो स्कैन करे, गांठा शोस में स्कैन करे लेवल को लो कंप्यूटर में ढूंढ के रखे सिद्धि करे निकले। बोला वो चार पांच दिन छिले रिटायर करे ही कोच चिना चिन। हाँ, ओके अपुन रखी को पढ़े रखा था वो चीज़, ठीक है चीज़। Great man, no? <laughs> no place to sleep. Uh, he has a, a young uh, granddaughter and wife. They are pushed in one corner. <laughs> he is in, in the whole empire. I met him after several years and um, there is no other video. But I interviewed them. And they are very happy, we are very proud of what they have. Uh, granddaughter has no problem. She also they play this music, play this song. Lucky, lucky people. Fine. So so far we were we were in um, ah. But one thing I have to tell on of my own. If I don't show, that's not good. What I'm going to show you is almost empty house. Because my collection was still at the place where I was working in South Bombay, and I also started bringing frequently the disc from Chor Bazaar. Sometimes openly, sometimes when seeing wife and children are at home, so put under the camera <laughs> like Sunny, I laughing, you know, that's secret of the trade. But it so happened that uh, Michael Kinnear was to come and stay with me for one month. And my wife said, at least now clear it something, he needs some place to sleep. He said, don't worry, but uh, he, he will be happy with all this. He said, no, but there is no place for children to play uh, in the house. And we have only uh, two BHK, government stop quarter. So he forced me to buy a house, a flat in Badlapur. That is where we'll go. Uh, almost empty, but I just wanted to see that how I was forced to buy that house. And today it's slowly getting filled. So we'll just uh, have a look. Um,
Now today all these otherwise kitchen cabinets are full with audio cassette tapes. Then this room over here is again full with books and records. Sunny had visited me recently. Some machines lying up, all scattered. A, a peculiar collector's house. If that is not the house like this, then he is not a collector. In Indian scene. And in that room over there, there is a uh, one cupboard made where some records were transferred, and I had some cabinet at least there. In, the, in those cabinets with doors, uh, there are all 78 uh, RPM records lined up. And this, I used to pack in boxes and occasionally bring shipped things from uh, Mumbai to this place is about 60 miles from main town. And we bought this house with the hope that after retirement I will stay with my children there. But as it happens, they have all gone away and we are alone. So this cabinet, they have all still in the same situation and you will see in Rob books a picture of this with papers rolling out saying that unfinished projects. And uh, should I continue for 5-10 minutes more with the videos? It's fine? Okay. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. But where I have misplaced my folder? Okay. Yeah, here it is. Uh, unload skin. Okay, okay. All right. So in the same flat where you saw it was vacant, we will go and see our friend who is known to everybody in the hall here, and I have talked and shown you his pictures also. Would you recognize Rob here? So in such a situation also a real researcher and academician doesn't matter. He doesn't care whether there is dust or what happened. I don't know what has happened to sound here. <coughs> So during this Fulbright Fellowship, uh, Rob once visited me and there were many, many people uh, uh, who came and used uh, the facilities. Now we come down to South and a common friend of me and Sunny, and this is uh, taken from YouTube. This is about the record dealer in Bangalore who has helped immensely both to me and Sunny in our projects. Dear Srinivas Murthy, who runs Sita Phone on the Avenue Road, is one of the best known antique dealers in Bengaluru. He has an exciting private collection which he says is not for sale. On the eve of Republic Day, Deccan Herald visited him to explore his precious collection, most of which pertain to the independence era. About 2000 records I have got in my shop and two stores and in my house. Out of the two, this is all patriotic records, very special. I have selected and kept it for my listening. One of Murthy's most prized collection is a speech made by Gandhiji just after his visit to Mysore state. It was recorded in Madras and processed in London. In my tour last year in Mysore, I met many poor villagers and I found upon inquiry that they did not know who ruled Mysore. They simply said, some god ruled it. 
whenever I find time and whenever I'm alone, yeah. I take out my gramophone and listen to this one. Running here. He also has a few patriotic songs. Should we start again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I met him first in uh, 19, sorry, 2010, I think, when I, I was visiting, yeah, it's coming. I was visiting uh, Bangalore and I didn't know where to find record, but somebody at the last moment, on the last day of my stay there, because me, my wife and my mother-in-law, they were touring Bangalore and at the same time I had in my mind that I'm doing Young India project, I must find something in this town. So I called up my friend and she said, you see, there is some road called Avenue Road. You go down, it's a going deep down there and if you can find an antique shop, some antique shop dealers might have the records. So it was one o'clock in the afternoon, we had lunch and we had a flight at eight in the evening. So around four o'clock, we all landed there. And I started searching antique shop and my wife and mother-in-law, they were looking into other shops. I said, I'll be on this side, catch me. So for two hours, I just disappeared. And then she called me on mobile, where are you? I said, I am in this shop where I have seen 100 Young India rec label records, which I must negotiate with him. Then they said, okay, but remember, we have flight in the evening. <laughs> and that is where I met this man, which, whom you are seeing in the video. I hope uh, it come back. Whenever I find time and when I am alone, I take out my gramophone and listen to this one. He also has a few patriotic songs recorded by the Indian National Army. There is a recording of the INA's national anthem sung by an unidentified male singer. There is also a song Subhashji Subhashji sung by S.N. Saraswati. Both of these were possibly recorded in Japan. It was very, very popular things, popular records in those days. Almost all people who possessed gramophone, they used to buy one one record and listen to them. Along with so many collections, pyramids, uh, drama sets, they were buying this also. Very popular. They have sold 9,000 because of Mahatma Gandhi's speech in those days itself. Murti is very emotional about a Muhammad Rafi song, Suno Suno Ye Dunya Walo, from film Bapu Ki Amar Kahani. Sung to celebrate Gandhiji's life, the song moves him to tears even today. inherited these records from his father Sita Ramashetti, who set up Sitaphone in 1924. He dropped out of school to be a part of the antique business, a passion which still keeps him going. I love it. You know, it's a part and parcel of my life. I got so much regard for it. <laughs> That was taken on one of the uh, important days uh, in our country. Good, so we are in Bangalore. Uh, where do I take you now? Okay, in the same town we'll take. We saw old man, old dealer in Bangalore. And I talked about the young man who had a good fortune to even to go to Mrs. Sonia Gandhi through Ms. Gohar John of Calcutta. He is Vikram Sampath. And it so happened that after this, um, his much celebrated book, uh, he was uh, uh, invited by many people and he was offered many important posts 
uh, in archives and other things. And for a time being, he worked with a small archive in Bangalore. Uh, now he has left it and somebody else is taking care. But we are going to see a video of that era. How from the opposite end now, you saw a very old man selling records, now very young man taking care of records in the modern age. This becomes somebody is now stationed in Bangalore again, but now he's a director of symbiosis. He has given up this archive, but this is a video of uh, his efforts when he was running this archive. This is Mohanlal Pai, no? In a country of over a billion peoples, some would say one man can do very little. But for those who are driven by passion, there is very little that cannot be done. Meet Vikram Sampat from Bangalore. The man is on a mission, and a very important one, of preserving India's rich musical heritage. constant query every, everywhere was uh, why doesn't India have a national sound archive especially for vintage music of the country and as a student of music as a student of uh, history it was really embarrassing to for me to tell them that we don't have one such to collect vintage music has taken him to some of the strangest places in the world Vikram has sourced nearly 10,000 gramophone records from India dating as far back as 1902 when the first Indian gramophone record was created Usually, uh, it's, it's at the Chor Bazaars, the flea markets. Uh, for instance, you have places like uh, Moor Market in Chennai or Avenue Road in Bangalore, Chandni Chowk and, uh, in Delhi. So places like the, the Dharamta Lama area in Calcutta. So, places where you wouldn't expect uh, you know, uh, the valuable cultural inheritance of India to be lying there. But that's where you find most of it. In all this, technology plays an important role. Once the gramophone records are collected, it is cleaned and played on a turntable. The music is digitized and recorded on a computer. Using open source tools, it is edited and the noise is filtered out. It is then hosted on a website and a SoundCloud account for everyone to access. A mobile application is also being built. Interestingly, I think it was the gramophone which actually uh, democratized music. Because till the time the gramophone came in 1902, uh, musical concerts, especially say, classical music concerts, were the preserve, as you mentioned, only of the rich, the, the royalty, the nobility, the zamindars and others. For common people, it was probably the, many of them couldn't even afford some of these concerts or to get into that social strata. Uh, for the first time, the voices of these great uh, artists were available on these discs for common people to actually listen to from their homes. Vikram does all this in his spare time from work. The project is backed by Mohandas Pai, former Infosys director and the chairman of the Manipal Group. The team wants to scale this up with the help of volunteers and other patrons who are record collectors themselves. We wish Vikram all the very best in his journey. So here, is a, here was a young man from Bangalore who is deep in it and around the same time when Rob Millis got a Fulbright scholarship to come from United States to Delhi and spend one year here, Vikram also got Fulbright scholarship to go from India to Berlin and he spent one year in Germany and toward the end he visited or maybe during the course he went to Austria and saw the Vienna archive. And that is where he got the idea that when I go back, I must also start something like Indian Archive. And if you go to website today, I think it's, uh, I hope it is still up and running. There are tons of material which he has uh, uploaded as clean videos, uh, which anybody from any part of the world can access and listen to. So these were all individual efforts and the collectors, uh, which I could, I mean, they have collected me, not that I have collected them. We are all together. And I am very proud of them. And now we'll shift a focus a little bit to the organized efforts. 
And one such organized effort is a place called Sholapur in Maharashtra, where three people, three collectors came together 25 years ago. They invited me for inauguration talk and they formed a unit of our Society of Indian Record Collectors. And meticulously for 25 years, they are bringing the people in the town together, maybe once in a month or once in blue mood. They bring people for listening to records. And slowly the idea so much evolved that one of the member, active member was also a committee member of the local book library. So he toyed with the idea that why don't we ask library to provide one or two rooms so that all the artifacts in the town around can be shared, can be stored at one place rather than in somebody's house in bad condition. And that is the ever first place for a records in book library has come in Sholapur. So we'll go there now. And um, I hope it is, yeah, it is here. And interestingly, you will see the uh, collection center, but what they are doing, and that is what we will also follow it here, that once in a month, they bring select students from local schools around. And then there is a Sunday morning session for two to three hours, where children are exposed to all these media. They are allowed to handle them and some scholarly talks. So we'll go in one such example and just uh, have a like, look at that. But before we go into the crowd, let us have this museum in its ambience first. Oh, 
So this too it is on YouTube, it's a long video you can see. But this is one example. This is one example where the records and record collectors can be brought in a public place. And um, this unit of our Solapur will be completing 25th year of operation next month. And we are going to have in March, not in February, in March, there is two events, two day seminar like this here in Solapur town and exhibition for the public like we did in Calicut. So those who can make it, <laughs> they are invited. But this is a very uh, interesting and I am very proud to tell you that coming together has helped in bringing this again together. Now we will go to a couple of last videos but before that I want to Again, come back to individual. If a record collector is a musician himself, because you know, there are different kind of collectors. Somebody wanted, I have it. Somebody is interested only in sleeves. So many layers. But if he himself is a musician, so we are going to see one man in Bombay, and I happen to go with him. He is a um, actor, singer. He plays female roles on Marathi stage drama beautifully sings but he has a passion towards collecting record machines like all of us and he also has a sizable uh, collection of cylinders which he has contributed partly to Sharma's book. Now this man one day I got a call from Kulaba from a one Parsi lady that we have a piano but it doesn't work. Do you know somebody who can mend my piano? So this man is expert in mending machines also so I took him to his home. Now piano, you know, uh, Western instrument, so he, we together sat for a few hours, he pulled some, did something and it started working. And so he was so happy with the tuning of that piano and old machine that he started singing a Marathi Natya Sangeet along with playing. Just a minute's uh, thing we will see with Vikrant. Vikrant Ajgaonkar is his name. Isn't it good? He is a good friend of me as well as Kushal Gopalka who was here with us. Again, we will go in the same Bombay town and now suburb of Bombay, that is Kalyan. And Kalyan, we have one senior person, around 85 now, lives alone because 
his family has sort of abandoned him, says that you and your different machines. <laughs> we buy you a separate flat in Kalyan because we have our business in Mumbai. So they live in Chembur, he lives there. He is given a small mobile phone like mine. And once in a day, he must call them that he's all right. So he goes out, purchase his own stuff. And you are going to see the same man when he was young in the next video. But first we'll see what is situation today. I visited him and I saw that he has a one small hall, then one bedroom inside, kitchen. And he has a cupboard, very interesting cupboard. When he opens the cupboard, there are stacks of 7, 8, 78 RPM records. And on the slots written for Monday, for Tuesday, for Thursday, for Wednesday, for Friday. And also breakfast, lunch, dinner. <laughs> he doesn't do anything else. He will pull out when he wakes up early morning while he's preparing breakfast, he will put on garage changer one stack. It falls one after the other. By the time a whole lot finishes, he finishes breakfast. If you go inside his bedroom, because the area is prone to mosquitoes, he has put a mosquito curtain all around bed. So on one side he will sleep, at the foot there is a television inside the mosquito net. <laughs> That's a craze. So we quickly let us go and see. And he is an expert person who repairs ground phone machines. He has now given up because his eyesight is failing. But uh, he also would go to Chor Bajar every Friday, then buy back full of records, bring home, listen all of them till next Friday, then sort out which he doesn't like. Next Friday, will he go to Chor Bajar and he will sell this I don't like, so this you take back at half the price than what I paid last Friday. <laughs> That's how he has built up his collection. So, Mr. Vaswan in Kalyan, let's see another gem from my collections. <laughs> Says the bedroom under TV set there. So we go back to the first year of 27 years of my collection. That's why that you are going to see in the next video. Because this is the time when uh, Michael Kinner was staying with me in 1991. For one month almost he stayed with me. And my children would always say, what is this uncle not stepping out of his bedroom at all? And whenever we go, so he's just looking at the ceiling, thinking something and then writing down something in his notebook. He never plays with us, he never talks to us, he never brings us chocolates. <laughs> what a strange man this. But now today they know what he was. So it also very interesting incident, interaction with Michael. Because I read about him in one Marathi newspaper and I wanted to know how can I contact him more. Because I was toying with this idea that in this city of Bombay there are so many collectors. I meet them every Friday on Chor Bajar. Now some of them are my friends. How do we come together? And I read about this, that there is one gentleman in Australia 
who want to bring a complete encyclopedia of Indian recordings. So I said, encyclopedia of Indian records. Who is this man? So I went to the press, Times of India, got the editor and said, give me the source. So I could get the address. And in those days, you know, 85, 89, write letters by hand, no typewriter, no computer, no machine, no mobile, nothing, no WhatsApp. So it would take two, three, three, three weeks for letter to travel to Australia, return, so we converse. And then around 1990, he told me, I am coming to India for my work. Can I stay with you for one? I said, okay, welcome. You have to put up with me because there are two things. We don't smoke and we don't drink at home. So you have to <laughs> take care of that. He said, okay, I will go in the, up in the balcony and smoke. And I will request your wife to at least put one beer bottle in the refrigerator <laughs> that I will <laughs> drink when everybody is asleep. I said, fine. He came, stayed with me for one month. He took me to all the lanes and alleys in Bombay and Chor Bajar, which I did not know. He even took to the guy whom he had dedicated his label book. And that dealer in Mumbai, he was around 85 age that. And in Chor Bajar, in Baikal area, we found his house. The moment I went with Michael in his house, he got up from his bed and embraced him. That my Videsh ka kharidar aage hai. And then they talked together in broken Hindi, broken English. And he told me later on that this man would not show this record to anyone unless I have seen them first. He had so much, because he knew what I was doing. So this is Michael Kinnear and uh, he told me, Suresh, you have a good idea, let's start so I made a small appeal in newspapers that we are planning to have a group, friends of records, not enemies of records, record collectors group. So in my own house, we had a meeting of about 10, 12 people where Michael was also present. And then slowly it caught up. He said, you do want two lines. You publish a magazine and you have listening sessions where you can connect to ordinary people, what they are preserving, what is it for, meant for. Around the same time, there was a very famous show going on in Indian TV called Surabhi, Siddharth Cox's show. So somehow they contacted us and they interviewed Michael um, for two uh, series. One was Gata Jaya Banjara, which is a complete history of Bollywood film songs from beginning 1931 to almost 1990. And second, Surabhi episode. So one of the Surabhi episodes, they uh, recorded Michael and our interview. And that is where you are going to see in the final clip here now where you will see man standing here with little bit more hair and with hefty. Michael Kinjer himself and some of the our record collectors from Mumbai who joined in the beginning. And where is that? Uh, Surbi final, okay. Have I finished rest? I think yes, almost I have finished everything. Wonderful. Yeah, so we come here toward the end of the talk with few more slides, let's hope. Ji nahi, na hum kabhi bhule hain, na bhool paayenge Bite zamane ki is madhur mithe sangeet ko 78 RPM records ka ye sangeet Iska jita jagta praman hai Which was in a different place Inhe hi kattha kiya hai बंबई के उल्लास नगर में रहने वाले श्री शोभाज ने पेशे से इंजीनियर मगर बिगड़े रिकॉर्ड प्लेयर्स की मरम्मत और पुराने संगीत के एक बड़े शौकीन मगर इस अभियान में श्री शोभाज अकेले नहीं हैं क्योंकि वो सदस्य हैं सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडियन रिकॉर्ड कलेक्टर्स के हम सोसाइटी के प्रेसिडेंट श्री नारायण जिंदगी की यादें चाहत और लगाव इस संगीत के साथ जुड़ा है ये संगीत सभाएं मुमकिन हो पाती हैं सोसाइटी के हर सदस्य के पास मौजूद अनोखे रिकॉर्ड संग्रह के जरिए जैसा कि श्री मुलानी का संग्रह है यह मेरा कलेक्शन है और इसमें करीबन 3000 रिकॉर्ड्स हैं मेरे पास इसमें फिल्म संगीत से लेकर शास्त्रीय संगीत और और भी किस्म के रिकॉर्ड्स हैं जो 1905 से लेकर आज तक के बहुत से लॉन्ग प्लेइंग रिकॉर्ड्स भी रखी हुई हैं
और यही वजह है कि संग्रह में बहुत सी प्रसिद्ध रिकॉर्ड कंपनियों के लेबल डिजाइन सुरक्षित हैं हिंदुस्तानी संगीत के साथ और क्लासिकल में जैसे पंडित ओमकार नजी ठाकुर हैं पंडित नारायण राव व्यास अविनक राव पटवर्धन हीरा बाई बड़ोदकर केसर बाई केकर इसी तरह से और फिल्मी म्यूजिक में आमिर बाई जोरा बाई खान मस्ताना जी एम दुर्रानी राजकुमारी जी ऐसे बहुत से पुराने आर्टिस्ट जो थे पहले उनके ज़्यादातर गाने हैं इसे हम ऑडियो हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया का एक नमूना भी कह सकते हैं पंडित नेहरू के भाषण ग्रीटिंग कार्ड्स विद मैरिलिन मॉन्ड्रो स्केट्स बॉडी बिल्डिंग इंस्ट्रक्शन रिकॉर्ड्स ये तरह तरह के रिकॉर्ड्स उन्हें मिले कहाँ से हमारे एक फ्रेंड थे वो एक बाजार में ले गए और वहाँ हम गए और वहीं से बहुत सी ऐसी रिकॉर्ड्स मिलने लगी तब से वहीं रेगुलरली जाते हैं और पुरानी रिकॉर्ड्स लेकर आते हैं मगर अफसोस ये बाजार जहाँ कभी चालू हालत में पुरानी चीजें मिला करती थी अब तेजी से आधुनिक चीजों के बाजार में बदल रहा है दुर्लभ सेवेंटी एट आर रिकॉर्ड्स के रिसर्च और डॉक्यूमेंटेशन में जुटे हैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया के माइकल किनियर जो सोसाइटी के प्रेरणा स्रोत भी हैं The significance of this society of Indian record collectors to today's and future generations that is that if we don't preserve the sound recordings that are available now, they'll be lost forever. संगीत के अनमोल खजाने को बचाकर रखने में जुटे हैं ये लोग सोसाइटी के सेक्रेटरी सुरेश चंदवनकर एक वैज्ञानिक हैं शोभराज बासवानी इंजीनियर प्रेसिडेंट नारायण मुलानी बिजनेसमैन हर किसी के पेशे में वक्त की कमी फिर भी संगीत की विरासत को आने वाली पीढ़ियों को सुरक्षित रूप में हवाले करने की कोशिश में ये लोग वक्त निकाल ही लेते हैं सो आवर जर्नी कम्स टू एंड नाउ एंड दैट्स हाउ द ट्वेंटी सेवन ईयर्स रोलिंग बैक from today 2016 to almost 1990 i i derived immense pleasure in doing this for all these years because uh, i never realized that when i began in 1990 with the help of mr kinier in fact in the suggestion of mr kinier that one day it will take up and it will have so many different directions to go launch on and i'm still more happy that yesterday we saw a young man who touched the gramophone for the first time and another young man sitting there who is scratching record so it's not to going to stop here it going further and to assist them uh, we have our online magazine here where about 3000 pages of text is all available in pdf format for anybody to access any time any part of the world on three different websites although i'm not our own website and the uh, things uh, continue this is what the books Michael has given us for uh, those guys who want to uh, have information about the gramophone records made in India. Also, he published uh, books on disco. And I am looking forward because there are you know you see so many young guys uh, listed. Ajit Raman, who is not here today, but uh, he was there in last two seminars from Hyderabad that time. Now in Trivandrum, Vikram Sampat, I have told about. There is another IT guy, Rohit Ashwat. who collects mainly western classical music then gajendra khanna is already sitting here kushal gopal ka you know then anurag choudhary in kolkata and there are also possible private public museums one is coming and partly for classical music is already in operation at jadavpur university at bangalore you saw mohanlal pais foundation it's still online then today sunny mathews museum has entered into third year and we hope that will be soon entering into 30th year but <laughs> although the time is long many more people will join and this collecting of the collectors is never stopping and never ending story i am very thankful to all of you uh, to listening to this and um, join thank you